Hi friends, it's Miss Joy. I'm going to be talking to you about using your markers, especially during pointillism. So when we are using our markers, we do not use it like this. We use it on the top and we do not use the cap. We use it on the point. So that my friends is the point to make a dot. And that's how we remember the name of our artwork we're doing pointillism. So when I'm using a marker, I can use the tippy top to make a letter. I could make my name or to draw a shape. Or I could turn my marker flat on its side and use the broad side to make wide lines. And sometimes when I'm coloring in, I can, instead of making a scribble, I can make long controlled movements in a line, in a row, to make my coloring look really well done. So when I'm doing a pointillism fruit, we're going to be doing fruit. Let's switch over to a picture of a banana. We're not going to be coloring like it's a coloring page. We are not coloring all the way in. If I was using the side of my marker, I could get a lot of coloring done. If I was doing the tippy top and making scribble lines, it would take me a lot longer. But this is going to take even longer than that. Pointillism is making little tiny dots. And we need to take our time and do our best work. We're not treating it like a coloring page. We are dotting in. Now, if there's an area that has more yellow or more color, I can make my polka dots closer together. If there's an area, maybe there's a highlight or a reflection where the light hits, I could make some spots further apart. Then, if I want my dots to not be all the same size, I can make some of them a little bit bigger. I don't want everything to be solid yellow because it's going to be a little bit boring. If I looked at a real banana, I would see some lines and I would see darkness near those lines. I would see some darkness near both of the ends, especially if it was really ripe. I might see more darkness coming down. And if I don't want my spots too little, I can make some that are bigger by making a very controlled circle. So some could be a polka dot. I am not jamming my marker down. That would flatten the tip and ruin my marker. Just the same way it would ruin my marker if I didn't put it in the open side of the cap. If I put it in the end that had a stopper there. If I wasn't paying attention and I was talking to a friend and I pushed in really hard on this end, I would ruin my marker. That might squish that marker tip. So I need to turn it over and look inside and notice the that's pretty open. That's the part that the marker goes into. And I listen for the magic click. So if I have a marker, I notice a lot of people that are not listening for the magic click might think their marker cap is closed, but when they toss it in, it looks closed. Unless they look really closely, it's not all the way closed. So what if somebody comes over here and uses all these markers and they walk, walk back over to their table with this and they put it on the shelf, they walk back over to the shelf and nobody ever notices that that poor little marker is all naked. So as it as we walk and this box moves and jiggles, this cap might get loose. And then what happens with our marker? It would be all dried up and hard and no good. So what if I found a marker that was open, didn't have a lid, and I couldn't find its lid anywhere? Oh no! 
what if I had a different color lid that didn't go with that marker? Is that okay? Hmm. I guess it's okay, it's better than nothing. If you have the correct color top, it's best to use that one. But if you don't have the correct top, some top is better than no top, right? Make sure you're clicking those and listening for the magic click. Now, the other thing we have to keep in mind is when we are doing our dots, we don't want it to be any bigger than the back of a pencil eraser. So if we're doing pointillism, we could switch to different browns. Look at all these different browns I have. I have these because we have lots of different skin colors and these are all skin color markers. So look at all the different color shades. Some are lighter and more peachy, some are more orangey, some are more brown and darker. Some of them um, that aren't even in here have a little bit more of a pink color to them. Um, there's lots and lots of different color skins. So because we have all of these beautiful uh, multicultural markers, we could use some of these even in our banana because the regular markers just come with a plain old brown and we don't want just the plain brown and just the plain yellow. We could add more different, a beautiful tan. Okay, so now here come the size of our dots. We do not want it to be a huge giant dot because in that situation, it might look like we were just doing a coloring page. We want to keep our dots smaller than the size of the back of an eraser. So this would be too big of a circle. This one's just right. This one's smaller, so that's good. This one's even smaller, so that's good. So what other colors would we see on a banana? If my banana was not ripe all the way, I might see some green dots. Have you ever seen green on a banana? Now, I think that when we look at a real banana, the color would be more yellow in here. And then there's a different color around the edge. Next time you spy a real banana in person, I want you to notice it's not all rounded over. It's got some edges where the lines kind of come together, the parts of the peel come together into a little bit of a point. So let's see, maybe this one's really, really not ripe and we're gonna do different colors of green. And then I could go back and add bigger dots, but not huge dots. I'm not gonna do ginormous dots like that because that might look more like a polka dot banana than a pointillism banana. All right, then I'm gonna come back in with my yellow. I can go in between the green. I can leave some spaces open to go back over with more different color. And this is just a practice banana, so I'm gonna ignore the big dot that's not supposed to be there and where I, I was pretending to do a color page. We're just gonna ignore that part. I might want some darker brown at the end of the nanner. Do you call yours a nanner? What if yours is an open banana with a peel? That part inside the banana is a lighter yellow. It's not actually white. So what if you had an apple? It wouldn't be all red. It would be a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, maybe some yellow or green. There's green apples. Uh, the different ways you do your artwork is going to depend on which fruit you choose. We are going to have lots of different fruits to choose from. So after I show you this, I will show you the choices of fruit that we will be able to look through. And I just wanted to give you an example of the inside of a banana. So if you were doing a banana that was half peeled or unpeeled, I might do fill in all of my peel and I would do my dots more close together. And then the inside is probably see this is white on the white paper probably not all the way white 
I would assume that there is some color to your banana unless you are eating a banana that is not ripe. I don't know, I think it would still be yellowish. Um, okay, so it looks like corn right now because it's polka dotted. We will be filling it more in. I'm leaving lots of spaces though because that's kind of how we show that it's not as yellow as the peel. So the peel might have yellow dots more close together and the inside meat of the banana, we can look at some real pictures and see what what the inside part of the banana should look like. Um, I don't know, maybe it has a little brown, a couple brown spots, it could. Depends on what banana you're eating. But the, the idea is not to make it all one color because then it's really boring to look at. So my viewer needs to be interested in the artwork in order to keep looking at it. Um, it's okay to turn your paper. It's good to be gentle on your marker. It's not good to jam your marker down. And it's okay to go back with bigger size circles. I just want you to remember to keep space in between so that you can come back with other colors and fill in more. And the eye will do the blending for yourself. You will not even have to do any blending when you do pointillism. You're putting things right next to each other. You don't have to do blending. It's a trick that happens inside of your eye where it's literally fooling your eye. Okay, let's move to look at the real fruit choices we have. So grapes could be green or red or purple. You would not do all red if your red, grapes were red. You'd be adding in maybe some blue and some purple into your red grapes. If you had blue grapes, maybe you'd have some purple in there. Same with purple grapes, you'd have some blue in there. Um, maybe even some touches of pink. Could you do green grapes? I would not only use green, I would probably find a dark green, a light green, and I would probably also add some yellow. Now where the sun hits, I might even add some peach. Who knows? Might even add some brown. Then for the stem, maybe I would do a bunch of different color browns, maybe some little speckles of black for my stem. Um, switch back to lots of greens and browns for the leaves. Some of my friends in the other class thought of having the leaves even have some red and green in them because when it gets turns to be fall time, sometimes we get a little speckle of red and orange in our leaf. This is an orange. It should not be solid orange of this color. We could add more different colors of orange we could add some brown, we could add some yellow, lots of different colors to add interest. This is a blueberry. Maybe we have light blue, dark blue, all sorts of purples. And if you remember that before a blueberry turns ripe and blue, sometimes you even see spots of pink in there with the green. You also can do lots of greens on the leaf or the stem area. Um, this might be a darker blue. Maybe you do a couple little spots of black in there to make it even darker. Could you find more than one color of purple or blue? Pears could be red or brown or green. This is a lemon. I would not just do yellow. So same thing with the banana. What else could I add in here? What would make my yellow lemon look more exciting? Hmm. I wouldn't probably do very much black, but I would probably do a little bit down on both ends, maybe where the stem attaches and down here. Ooh, cherries. So we could do red, we could do shades of pink, you might have some blue or purple, because remember blue and red will make it look sort of purple, because blue and red make purple. Uh, you could add a little bit of black, probably not very much of that, 
Um, it looks like this is actually a brown, but I thought it was a pink, so maybe we would do a lighter pink. Sure, you could add some browns in there in your cherry. Apples could be reddish, could be orangish, could be yellowish, peach. What if you're doing a Granny Smith? What if you were doing a yellow delicious? All right, what if you were doing an orange? Did we already do this one? I would probably do some browns. All right, so you will be able to fill in your fruit, do your best, vary the color. That means change the color. Don't stick with one solid color. Vary the size of the dot. That means change the size of your dots, but not bigger than an eraser on the back of a pencil. So probably my biggest dot I would do would probably be that big. And have fun. Your name is going on the back, not on the front, and it should be with pencil, not marker. Class code? And same with your worksheets, okay? So you need to do these, name, class code, and this is practice. Okay, have fun on your pointillism.